Barbara O'Connor has apparently vanished and is sought for questioning in these bizarre homicides. One of the bodies had been stuck in the hay and hung outside as a scarecrow. The other had been buried next to the flower garden. It's only a dead body. Now I can get rid of it. And now we go to the landmark home of Barbara O'Connor, where the infamous grandma murders took place five years ago. The bizarre crimes became a nationwide phenomenon, fascinating people of all ages and professions. The property has since been turned into a tourist museum, where intrigued spectators can explore the grounds where everything happened. Our on-location correspondent, Angie Angel, recently caught up with the creator of the museum, Barbara O'Connor's own grandson, Jeff Hayes. Hayes is an independent filmmaker working, coincidentally, on a gruesome true crime horror movie. Angie gained access to the set. This is Angie Angel, on the set of the new Jeff Hayes movie based on the upstate New York camp murders of the Great 1980s. Head. Open your mouth wide, make your eyes wide, and scream as loud as you can. Keep your eyes on the I'm real scared. Hold up, bitch, fuck a little bit more. Mad face. I just want to eat your eyeballs! I want to eat your eyeballs! Today, we're here to ask Jeff about another unsolved crime, one that he's related to. We want to know if he thinks his grandma committed the infamous grandma murders. My grandmother was a sweet old lady. I find it hard to believe that she could also be a stone-cold killer. But then again, they say everybody has a dark side. Um, but then again, who wouldn't want to take a stab at Susie? She was a little bitch. But to have cut up my uncle's body and to put the pieces in a stew like that, I... But then again, there was something that was always a little weird about Grandma's stew. And there you have it. You just don't know. Back to you, Ripley. Thanks, Angie. The unsolved murders have been the topic of much speculation, with many believing Barbara had nothing to do with the crimes, and others believing that she did indeed commit them. Personally, I think people are just looking for a scapegoat. Did Barbara commit this crime? Highly unlikely. It is what you might consider a modern day witch hunt, really. People are dealing with a situation in which they don't have answers to a bizarre scenario. This causing panic or uh, hysteria. In this hysteria, there is always a need for justice. I always felt there was some sort of abduction involved in the case of the grandma crimes. Upon studying the land in Barbara O'Connor's backyard, I came to the conclusion that this was definitely an alien abduction. Imprints found in the soil are those of extraterrestrial spacecraft. Barbara was clearly beamed aboard a UFO. Whether or not the UFO has any involvement in the murders is still to be determined. It's safe to assume that Barbara is still aboard the UFO, probably cruising through the Milky Way, drinking a strawberry frat with a kitty cat or two. The facts remain that the butchered bodies of both Barbara's granddaughter and her son were found in her backyard. Mutilated pieces of her son's body were found in a stew in her refrigerator. Barbara O'Connor has never been found. Theories on what really happened to her have ranged from witchcraft to satanic ritual and even kidnapping. But the truth still remains a mystery. The museum is open every spring and closes for the year on Halloween. Guided tours are available upon request by a local grandma crime aficionado. And it was right here in this very kitchen where Susie was brutally murdered by her grandmother. And it was believed to have happened in one of these two chairs. Barbara viciously stabbed her in the chest, in the stomach, and even the face. And after the autopsy, examiners found that Susie had been stabbed over 40 times. Barbara murdered her granddaughter in cold blood. But that's if you believe Barbara did it. Well, that about does it for our special Halloween edition of Inside Access. This is Ripley Rogers wishing you a safe and happy Halloween.